Hi, I'm Matthew Tomaszewski, and on this month's episode of This Old Hall, we're at the Spurlock Museum on the U of I campus to visit an old friend. I attended the University of Illinois 1960 to 1963 as a pre-med student, and uh, so there were some exams there, as I recall, and I do recall that the shiny nose and the tradition of rubbing his nose for good luck. I remember him being, you know, variation of the color, and especially the nose, of course. I remembered him being larger, but that was probably just perspective. But it's pretty cool to see that he's here. We were wondering what happened to him. Lincoln now looks like he did when he first arrived at the U of I in 1929. Getting him to look as good as new, though, took the help of an expert. Before Lincoln came to the Spurlock Museum, he was sent to Chicago for three months of restoration. In the dim light of Lincoln Hall, which was the bust's home for 80 years, the damage to the statue wasn't obvious, but it would be in the renovated, better-lit space. As you can see from these photos taken prior to restoration, Mr. Lincoln had scuffs, scars, and gouges, like these on his forehead, where the brown patina was worn through. The patina serves as a protective coating that prevents the bronze from oxidizing. You can see more marks on his back. You can also see globs of plaster at the base of the sculpture. The bust was kidnapped in 1979 for a couple days. After it was rescued, workers used plaster as a glue to prevent future thefts. The, the damage or the, the kind of uh, really was all to the patina. The bronze itself was perfectly fine. What I ended up doing was um, doing a very light sandblasting. I concluded that this, this area and through here and some areas up, up around the hair were probably very close to the original color of the patina. Then I used the torch to heat the surface and then I worked the two chemicals back and forth. The uh, ferric nitrate gives you the brown color and um, the liver sulfur, in my view, gives it a little more depth. I think it's a really wonderful piece. You know, it really is a very, very nicely modeled. He's, he's thinking, he's visioning. You know, he came more out of the early, the early Lincoln. You know, no, no beard. Um, and in some ways, that was, that was when he became, uh, heavens, that, that was an era in which he became the man that uh, he was to be. When this was made, uh, scholars of the Lincoln statuary uh, consider this to be the finest of the Lincoln as a young man uh, sculptures. It was not intended to be in a niche originally. It was intended to be uh, viewable for, from all angles. And so now, for the first time, uh, people will be able to see uh, Lincoln from uh, every angle. Any touching, usually on any type of metal in museums, we always handle metal artifacts with gloves on because your, your, the oils in your hands do react with the piece. I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's true. From a preservation point of view, the best thing is to not touch it. But we understand that this is a piece with a tradition of being touched. And yeah, give this about 30 years and his nose will, will again be back to the bronze color. I did rub his nose, but then once I started working here, I realized that I was degrading the metal, so I stopped wanting to rub his nose. <laughs> I think um, some future generations of students are going to have to work on shining up that nose. <laughs> Mr. Lincoln will be a guest of the Spurlock Museum throughout the renovation of Lincoln Hall until we move in sometime in the summer of 2012. Until then, if you need a bit of luck, you can visit him here. Well, that's all for this episode. We'll see you next time on This Old Hall.